As always, let's just begin by having a look at the agenda. We've got three main areas of discussion. First thing we're going to do is look at the applicable legislation. We will see that we have several key areas to think about. First of all, we need to think about what we might call the old law, the Data Protection Directive 1995, as implemented in this jurisdiction by the Data Protection Act 1998. We'll see there are still a number of cases kicking around that I'll be discussing today that do reference those particular provisions. Obviously, more recently, we are more interested in what is now the UK GDPR and also the Data Protection Act 2018. We'll see that they have slightly different provisions to what was there before. Breach of confidence, misuse of private information struck out on this occasion. Why? Because disclosure had been made by a third party, not by the defendant. Negligence also struck out because there's no evidence to support that allegation. However, the action in respect of breach of the 1998 Act is unaffected. So in the circumstances, that continues. However, that particular claim has been stayed pending the outcome of the appeal to the FTT, that stands for First Tier Tribunal. Now, that was heard over seven days in November 2021. I have to say, I've been unable to find that the date of recording of this session details of what the First Tier Tribunal had to say. Mr Skelton, probably to prove that there's more to life than senior IT auditing, has a sideline business that he operates. And he effectively supplies dietary supplements through the post. These dietary supplements effectively are bags of white powder, but they're not perhaps what you might think. Anyway, the long and the short of it is to save himself a few quid, instead of posting it himself at the post office, he sends it out via Morrison's post room so that Morrison's pay the postage for him. And then what happens is one day that one of these parcels bursts open in the Morrison's post room with white powder everywhere, and people think it's some form of poison. Of course, within the packet, there's Mr. Skelton's name. So what happens then is that is the, the post-room incident there on the 30th of March. He is then suspended from work for several months. He returns to work in July. He is given only, unbelievably in my view, a formal verbal warning. But he's not even happy about that. He appeals against it. And his appeal is rejected on the 15th of August. 